Boom. All right. All right. What is today? September 2nd. All right. Here we are at the DevSync. And Derek's going to go first. All right. Well, as you know, I've been doing this, these videos for marketing the last couple of days. So this morning really was unpacking everything um, and trying to you know, re reorganizing the, the shop from my mad prototyping uh, week to get to get the, the device. Sorry, I guess we can show this on camera, right? So we get this this guy for uh, for its close up. Uh, so yeah, morning was just kind of putting things back in order after all that. Um, and then this afternoon was mostly kind of catching up with, since I've, I've basically been kind of out for the, the, the whole week until now, doing all that stuff. Uh, so catching up with Dwayne, and um, we had the, that discussion about um, long lead time parts. So yeah, it's just kind of a catch up day for me. All right. Um, let's see. Well, let's go, let's go over to guys. Um, the most exciting news is that the new skill update got merged, which is, um, very happy for me. Uh, woo! um, and even, I, I submitted it to the marketplace and it's, uh, all the VK tests are passing, which is also very exciting. Um, which also confused me a little bit because, you know, the timer tests were failing elsewhere, but, um, but... Uh, I don't know if Chris is going to talk about that. We've been digging into that a little bit and um, found some issues, um, particularly with stop, the not the stop process, but the um, the stop beeping custom step for the for the timer skill. Um, so the beeper in the timer is actually like the timer skill calling play wav, like play this wav file, just on a repeating schedule every every second or something. Um, a couple of seconds. Um, it's not using the audio service. No, no. Well, and I, I, for for a second, I thought about you know, oh, why isn't it using the audio service? We should just do that. But then, if there was anything else playing, it would, it would not be able to play over the top of it, right? Because it would. It would have to send out a audio service pause, play its uh, wave, and then send send out an audio service resume. Yeah. So it, it would be. Quite weird. Well, and you need to like mess around with the track listing. Anyway, I, I figured that that came like how we structure that um, behavior really came in the skills interaction sprint that's coming up. Um, and we've talked about uh, the desire for um, like both internally and, and in the community, there's been conversations about the need for, you know, um, particular handling of um, other types of sound, so like notification sounds and things like that, because they're not, they're, they're clearly quite different to like play this music track. Anyway, so I, I decided to leave that alone. Uh, but um, but the way that we use that play web thing, it actually just initiates a, a process and then leaves it hanging, doesn't, never stops it. Or, um, and so, and then the way that we check for it is, does that process exist? And because the process is forever hanging, it will, forever exist uh so i'm actually impressed that it's been passing for as, at all <laughs> like, that's um, horrifying but uh yeah yeah um we need to okay we'll, we're we'll fixing we're fix, so we're fixing that for the audio service to make that work probably. yeah 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 so we're fixing like we're doing the temporary fix f for, for the time scale but i think you know uh important for the for the um, for a proper fix to come in the skill interaction sprint. Um, and the other thing I started looking into was um, so Chris did the uh, the new Docker container for um, for twenty one oh two dot one, and then we discovered this this very tiny but significant bug. Um, and so we had a quick chat last night about whether we needed to do a new release of Minecraft core. Um, but the bug itself literally only like it's, it's in the VK test, um, files. So it only pertains to the Voight conf tests. So, um, 
kind of decided to modify the, the Docker container to just fix this single character rather than doing an entire micro core release. Um, uh, but then when I, once I'd done that, the pulse audio daemon has started failing consistently every time, which is something that I've seen sporadically, but now it's happening every single time on this Docker container. So, um, that's where I ended up last night and I haven't, haven't gotten past there. Um, so yeah, that was a big part of yesterday. Um, I started, I've been posting the job around, uh, and yeah, more, more chats with different community members around, you know, what our priorities are. And I've made the, uh, the project board, the new sprint project board public, um, but I haven't posted it anywhere yet. So people probably don't know about that yet, but I'll leave, I'll even add a link in the description. So uh, if you haven't seen it by our other channels, then check that out. Um, uh, the idea being, you know, the the, uh, so the the sprint project board is a list of all of our upcoming sprints that we've been organizing internally. Um, and under each column, uh, each column is a sprint. And then under each column, there are cards for either... PRs or issues or um, links to downstream um, projects and particular bits of their code that we think are relevant, well, that I've I've thought are relevant for those sprints. And so um, at the moment, it's just been me like putting things that I think are relevant in there. But the, the idea is that everyone um, should jump in there and have a look. And if there's things that you think are relevant, um, then we want to add them on there as well. Uh, I don't think random people can do that themselves, but, um, ping me and, and we'll get it on there. What do we use pulse audio for? Audio. We use pulse audio for what? <laughs> well, for, for all the audio as in we, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit of, a, I, we've kind of ended up in this situation where some things are like, doing things on the Alsa mixer and, and, but a lot of stuff, uh, um, uses pulse audio. So the audio service doesn't use pulse audio. Okay. We, I'm fairly sure we use pulse audio, but well, there's, I've seen references to pulse audio in config files and throughout the code. I, that's why I'm questioning. What do we use it for? Because Pulse also, like, see, Derek, um, Pulse, like, talks to Ulsa, you know, anyway, right? So, yeah, it sits on top of Ulsa, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I know that it, it in different places we're, like, talking to Ulsa directly, but then in other places I'm I'm 95% sure that we're, we're using Pulse. Um, and, I mean, that's what we've, uh, what I've started looking at for, like, PyCroft, for example, Um because it's much easier to um, configure different um, devices using the, the Pulse audio utilities rather than also. Well, one of the changes I remember having to make to the volume skill was to put a check for the enclosure type to make sure that it wasn't a Mark II, so it wouldn't try to mess with also and change the volume that way. It would send out a message on the message bus that the enclosure would pick up and basically forward on to the hardware. So I recall doing that, but I, I mean, I recall also being a problem. Some people directly talk to also in certain places I've had to, you know, put an if then else around it with the enclosure type. But mm -hmm. as far as pulse goes, I wasn't aware that we were using pulse directly. Um, but maybe like you said, Pycroft or something, I don't know. I've seen references to it. I've seen config values to it. It's, yeah, um, I mean, I have to double check, but don't we don't we use PA Play as a as one of the base level programs? For we use A Play for uh, oh. playing stuff, right? A Play, uh, but we use MPG one two three for MPEGs. We use A Play for waves. That's why I was kind of wondering what we'd use Pulse for. Now, there's certainly all sorts of other code out there that possibly is in other repositories or other skills that may directly use Pulse or rely on it. 
I don't know. That's why I asked the question. Hmm. Well, what happened? What seems to happen is when the pulse audio daemon fails, then the um, the uh, volume skill starts failing because presumably it can't. Well, what I thought was happening is that it couldn't find uh, the mixes. But well, he's the guy that throw, used to throw the also can't find also mixer exceptions on boot. But thought I fixed that anyway. All right, so I just find it odd that we have some that use the low-level A plays in MPG 123s, and some want to use ALSA, and some want to use Pulse Audio, but they all should be using the audio service, so, yeah. Yes, they all should be using the audio service, and but um, they should also, uh, you know, we should be trying to move towards, you know, using a single service, whether that's, if like, if it's ALSA, then, it, then we should be using ALSA, and if it's Pulse, then we should be using Pulse rather than, you know, doing this mismatch thing but it's it's one another one of those things that's just sort of grown over over the years i'm 99 percent certain that the correct answer is that we need to make everything move to a, a microft defined audio service which is a wrapper for whatever the platform has underneath on linux it'll be you know yeah. pulse audio or elsa whatever you know but on a more embedded system they don't have that heavyweight stuff it'll be just direct to the hardware you know totally and, yeah. and it seems like our Audio service has migrated recently to a plugin architecture. So if that is the direction, we should probably get the issues with that plugin system fixed. Okay. If there are, if you know of issues with the plugin system, then that would be good to know. But um but yes, I agree with everything people have said. <laughs> um I, is it running on am I is my Mark II running the plug-in audio service right now? Uh, it is, yeah, it, it has the, the plug-in system, um, but the audio services, like the default uh, audio services are all still included in core at the moment. But So it's installed, but I'm not using it. Uh, yeah, unless you use the GUI player, that's, that's installed, that's a plug-in. That's the only plug-in on there by default at the moment. But you can install other audio service plugins if you so choose. And the GUI player is used by what right now in, in, in Mark II? Uh, at the moment, unless you, unless you set it to use it, um, it, it, won't, it won't automatically use it. So um, I, okay. I had it switched over for the, for the latest channel um, for a little while, um, but then we had the, the whole audio system um, failing uh requiring a complete restart so um uh for when we did the stable build i switched it back so that we could do the stable release um so it's still there and, and available for use but like for the stable build it's not it's not the default okay so i wouldn't have found any problems with it personally because i haven't been using it probably okay um but yeah it's it's uh, particularly you know we've we're at august um we could take this opportunity to you know at some point we've been wanting to pull out all the all the other um older systems that are just have just been added to Minecraft over the years for um uh, and pull them out as plugins um and so that would be a useful thing to do at some point um and it would you know make the code base of my whole bunch cleaner we'd get rid of some you know weird things like the um one of the one of the audio services doesn't even exist you have to install this pip package if for it to act for it to run and um uh which was jarvis's pip package and he thought that we'd maintain it you know we'd but we're not it's not a at all a priority for us so we we kind of came to the decision to to deprecate it um but it's still in there we haven't removed it so um yeah and then we can do the same for the tts and the stt you know pull out pull out all those um things and and slim it right down and and push them out as um as plugins if we are going to support them or encourage other people to um, create plugins if we um, if we're not going to support them. 
which Open Voice have also made a whole bunch of plugins because they've they've gone down. You know, they've they've done they've pulled everything out because um, yeah, they don't need to worry about backwards compatibility at all. So okay, um, must be nice. Yeah, 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 it would be good. Uh, I, I, that thing's odd because wouldn't everyone who's trying to use that anyway? I don't care. Um, uh, so, uh, Chris, uh, yes, are you, is that, is that, uh, for everything? Uh, yeah. Oh, and like they have a, they have a plugin manager, so they've, they've kind of done a bunch of work to like make that plugin system more usable by, by end users in a way, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll shut up. I think that's about me. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chris Bear. Yeah, so um, following on from Gez's comments, um, there the VK test, the test to see if the um, if the if the timer noise <clears throat> has stopped are basically worthless right now because um, of the way it is not one long wave file that continuously beeps. It beeps and then it stops and it beeps. And so, I mean, any whenever that code, what it does is it looks for the the uh, the file being played on the file system on the system using a psutil. So, depending on when it makes that check, it may or may not actually be playing. Um, so, those tests are just not great right now. So, that's kind of what I've been working on today. Um, I want to get rid of the test to see if the audio is playing or not. Um, my current approach is to add a uh, an event to the timer skill that says that um, expired timers have been removed um, and check for that. So, but that then led to um, me looking at Okay, implemented a little while ago a criteria waiter for VK that um, you know, it says when this event happens, check this criteria, um, but it requires a criteria. Um, I, and my, I just want to check and see if the event got, um, got published on the bus. So I'm kind of reworking that a little bit to see if I can just, I can make it so a criteria is not required. Um, so you can either say, you know, did this, did this event come over the bus or not? And then you, that's one way to do it. And the other way to do it would be, did this event come across the bus? And if it did, did it meet this criteria? Um, so I've been looking at that. Um, I actually have some code written. That's what I've been kind of coding on today. I thought there was a wait for message uh, method. Or is that is that a custom one? In there's a wait for dialogue and there's a wait for, but it's not a wait for message. Uh, He's not the did you review the pull request I put in for the Wikipedia step file? I thought you reviewed that PR. That's in the Wikipedia skill, though. This is for the timer skill. I understand. Um, in there is the message bus handling for determining that a dialogue has completed being <laughs> by the underlying audio service saying, you know, it sends out a message, you know, I'm starting to play this wave file and I'm done playing this wave file. And I pick off the I'm done playing this wave file to determine whether or not the stop was actually affected. Um, so that's a way of doing it. But if the timer is playing the wave file directly, unless it's sending out a message saying I'm getting ready to play a wave file and I'm getting ready to stop or I'm done playing a wave file, kind of like the audio service does, then, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you could trigger on. What, but, why wouldn't you have an event that's, you know, alarm has stopped and then trigger? Yeah, I mean, well, the, alarm does. the alarm has that. The alarm has alarm playing, alarm stopped. But it also, in the VK tests, I put a trigger in for Wiki to, determine that the audio service is discontinued playing, right? So if I say stop, then I wait for it to say, yeah, I'm stopped now, right? 
Yeah, the, so, this comes back to the like the limitation of using the audio service for the timer beep, though. Um, mm, okay. Whereas, like, the alarm is kind of like a continuous thing, so I think it kind of makes a little bit more sense to, you know, pause the audio and just play this alarm kind of a thing. Um, but maybe we do the same thing for, for the timer. I don't know. But uh, anyway, this, I think Chris's approach is the, is the minimal, is the minimal, you know, thing needed to get us moving forward right now. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think it matters much if the beeping stopped. You know, um, yeah, it does matter, but uh, you know, it, it's a question of where can you make the assumptions. You know, do I do you actually need to check and see if the beeping stopped, or is the fact that the code that it does the expire the timers executed okay you know did the beeping stop or not maybe it's a better unit test <laughs> um, well, the problem with uh, with that approach in pandora was that if the process got hung it, it took out the also out channel and then nothing would ever play again because it would throw exceptions and say device busy and i'm wondering if you're running into that because you're doing the same thing that it's doing. You're firing up a process that's probably doing an, an, a, an a play wave file out. And if you terminate that and it doesn't terminate, then it's held onto the output channel, right? Anyway, I'm just, I don't know what's going on with yours. It sounds like you're on top of it. So, yeah, so um, I'm trying to implement this. We actually, we have a, if you look in, in this file with uh, wait code, we have wait for dialogue, we have then wait, we have then wait. we have a lot of different waiting mechanisms. And I think um, OK's criteria waiter was an attempt to consolidate those, but I think he missed a case. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on now is, is making this case work and then um, and then emitting an event out of the timer so these tests work. Um, or, or they work the way they're supposed to. Right now, they they fail, you know, unreliably because you know it's just a race condition. Um, so yeah, and this is all in in service of getting the timer skill, <laughs> the rewritten timer skill out into the marketplace. But until then, um, you know, we can't it, we, it can't be promoted until we can get the stable VK test, which is kind of why I'm spending time on VK tests. Right. But um, my understanding then uh, is that, but this is kind of a patch, right? We're going to have to make this more robust in the future. Well, I'm actually trying to make it robust. I'm at, so I'm trying to make it so that it, the race conditions are, don't exist anymore. Um, yeah. I'm trying to do it right instead of just patching what we have again so we'll see what i come up with but um but if this does work um it, it may mean another minor core this is not a one line change <laughs> it may mean we need to have another core release for this to to work the uh the issue of pulse audio gives and docker are pretty well documented um but part of it is not clearing out temporary directories between runs so there's some good information out there on the web for that. Yeah, right. I've, I've run across it in the prior life, previous life. Yeah, cool. Um, Chris, can we not include whatever requirements are needed to make this work in the timer uh, step file? Uh, like, rather than having to put it into core? It's going to have to go into core eventually. <laughs> yeah, At least yeah. it should go into core eventually. I could put it in the timer skill for now, just you know, as a as a one off. But I'm trying to code it to be a universally useful event waiter code. Yeah, well, understood. But I mean, that's what I did with Wiki, right? Um, I put the uh, feature or the function that rightfully belongs in VK tests in the step file for now, and then later, you know, we can move them up to VK tests if. So yeah, the wins later. I that that always drives me nuts because we'll never get around to fixing that. Um. Anyway, I yeah. Uh, yeah I don't want to try and solve solve things now. I um. I'm gonna see how I like have a poke because I I feel like 
we must have done this many times before. I, I feel like I have done this many times before, so there must, um, yeah. But I'll okay. Well, I can find the code. If you can find it, and you let me know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm just a little concerned that, you know, I, as, as we were just talking about, you know, redefining the audio, uh, the audio interfaces and tightening that up and making sure that that's a, a clear spec that will be consistent and how we want the skills to interact and all that. Um, that uh, I just took a note for myself to make sure that we also have the mechanisms for testing that when it comes to um, you know, that part of the project. Um, I, mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm just concerned that, um, well, there's nothing, nothing to be done about it. Like you've got to fix the test now and we're not going to get to that for a while. So you know, I, I suspect something's going to have to be redone anyway. But. Yeah, I mean, I would love to add like a then condition that says, yes, the, the beeping stopped. But, um, at, at, you know, when we get to that point, but for now, um, yeah, I, I think that would be a much more involved change than what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and I'll be on Instagram Live um, tomorrow because, uh, yeah, um, Chris Adair called me and said she wanted me to be able to answer any questions about the latest release. So, um, and she also said that I'm uh, bubbly. So, <laughs> <laughs> take that for what you will. But yes, That's very light for gassy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you want to see my ugly mug on Instagram Live tomorrow, I will be there talking about the new release. Cool. All right. Um, any other good news to share? I don't know if it's good. I won't be at the meeting tomorrow. My daughter's doing the um, Friday Night Lights thing. So um, I'll be supporting her in that. Um, but just tomorrow, I'll be continuing working on this. I, I'm going to keep on the VK tests until we can get them stable and get the and get the timer thing, uh, the new timer stuff installed. All right. Great. Um, okay. Well, thanks. I think we better go before the dogs go crazy. And uh, did you end up getting dogs, or are you just babysitting other people's dogs? I've got four dogs. <laughs> no, Michael. Yeah. Oh, uh, I just have the one dog. Yeah. Oh, you did get a dog, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. I remember, a, you were uh, babysitting one, and you were on the fence whether you were going to get one or not. Yeah, and we were not on the fence for more than a couple of days. That 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 dog became ours very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah as soon as another uh, we were fostering it and as soon as another uh person showed interest in wanting to perhaps adopt the dog we were like nope we're doing it <laughs> oh, one thing I did one, that's I how dogs one behave they'll take a bone and bury it in the backyard and forget about it but then when another dog comes within a mile they're willing to fight to the death for it <laughs> <laughs> I, I did want to mention I'm putting together the Mark II that was sent to me and doing it slowly as I have time. Um, but I noticed, and I don't know if this is a widespread issue or if it's just something that happened with my acrylics, but um, some of the holes aren't completely, like I've had to use the screws and a screwdriver to poke you know, the acrylic hole the right way. Um, and you know, pieces of acrylic are popping out of the holes. So I don't, it didn't seem to be an issue the last time I did it. Um, I don't know who's doing our laser cutting, but it was, it's all uh, the same batch of laser cut stuff. So that's weird. Yeah. Well, yeah, there were some uh, concerns in one of the channels that some of the holes weren't large enough to get like something through because there was a screw that was obstructing it. It's huh. in the. Um, I, I told I showed Derek. Uh, it's in the. Yeah. Uh, it's in the, the general room. Okay. Yeah, I, I generally use the like Phillips head edge to like um, just give all the holes a clean up because um, it's kind of like left left some cruft there. But I haven't had any major issues other than just like you know little bits of plasticky crap being in there. No, and in this case, I actually punched out entire cylinders of acrylic at them. Yeah, <laughs> there right. should have been all. <laughs> Um, and that was in some cases. Some cases there was just like a little cruft left, and I, you know, this little screwdriver hmm. would fix it. Well, we um, should. On one of them. We're probably not sending out any more, so 
well other than the ones for you know our team and stuff but right. yeah i just i wanted to mention it i don't know if it was even a big I mean, it, it, you know it's not that hard to figure out the va just you poke it through it i mean if i if i could figure it out i would hope anyone else getting a death can figure it out but yeah. <laughs> worth noting yeah, when you peel that peel, film off i expect all that stuff to just kind of fall out but i guess it wasn't cut all the way through yeah hmm. But yeah, no, it wasn't even a new new run of laser cut parts. It was those were all done at the same time. So mm -hmm. 